Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another landscape photography vlog. This time in San Francisco, we're on the, on the coast right now. And you can see beautiful, beautiful clouds. Really nice dappled light too. A little bit of warm, direct sunlight on the horizon and some nice big puffy clouds. So the conditions right now are perfect for landscape photography. You can see these pointy sea stacks and I think what I might do is put those sea stacks in the background, try and find a really interesting foreground water flow. Uh, maybe just standing right in the water or maybe some rocks uh, in the foreground to really accentuate that leading line into the background. But, you know, I haven't been down to this beach in a really long time and it's, it's one of my favorite beaches to shoot. So I'm really excited to take you guys on this, this little photography journey. Most of it's gonna be POV style. It'll be a lot easier to show you what I'm doing. And I think most of what I'm gonna shoot is with the 16 to 35 wide angle lens. The tide is really low. You usually can't get this close to these rock formations, but it's just beautiful. So right now on my camera, I've got a ND64 on here just to get a little bit more of a long exposure going if we need it. The birds are chirping. Even if I don't get a shot, it's just kind of nice to be out here, you know? So we're going to go a little closer here, see if we can get into the water flow. Okay, so I got a little bit closer to these sea stacks and the water flow is looking really nice try and get about half a second while this water comes in. Uh, maybe a little bit more actually, maybe like 0.6, but you can see the sun star right here in the LCD screen looks really nice. I'm gonna try and take some darker exposures now and then switch on back. And then I'm gonna let the uh, water recede here take a few more shots. Oh, here we go. Look at this wave coming in. This is perfect. Tripod sinking a little bit. So when it sinks, I just kind of press it into the sand, let it sink a little bit. And now it's pretty pressed into the sand and it should be good. I had a lot of uh, people asking me that in the last video, like, what do you do, um, you know, with, with the tripod sinking? And that's kind of what I do. I just sort of press it down and then it stays stuck in the sands. Okay, so we're kind of losing the sun there. If you plan on shooting seascapes, make sure to bring shoes that you don't care about or waterproof shoes. I just bring shoes I don't care about. Oh, here's a nice wave right here. Yeah, beautiful pattern. Now the bitter th sweet thing about it being so low tide is it's nice because you can get really close up to the sea stacks, which can be really unique. Oh, another wave coming in. Oh, that was a good one. But the problem with it being this low of a tide is sometimes it's nice to be able to stand in those rocks back there on the cliff because you can get some really interesting compositions from back there. So when it is such a low tide at a beach like this where there's not really any rocks down here near the water, you're kind of limited as far as how much you can really do with the foreground. So I got a composition that I liked of this sea stack right here. but. I think there might be some other opportunities in this direction to shoot, and I'm just gonna take a quick look just to see if we can find anything interesting. I, you know, I just wanna see if there's any other opportunities here before I completely dedicate all my time to uh, that one sea stack. See, I don't mind the way the sea stack looks from this angle either. It takes on a whole new shape, and you can see some different formations. And there's actually this rock here, which maybe we could 
get on top of. All right, let's see what's on top of this rock. This rock is only accessible on a low tide and I need to be careful because the tide is coming in. I don't really feel like having to jump back down <laughs> during high tide. So we're gonna take a quick look up here and just see if there's anything cool. I've never tried photographing from up here. I'm just gonna put down my tripod. It's windy up here too. I'm sorry if it's harder to hear me. Let's see what we got here. I was thinking maybe we could get like a leading line into that sea stack in the distance, but I think that this one over here, it's just a lot more visually interesting than that one is. You know, when you are battling time like this and you're working with some pretty beautiful conditions and as you're shooting, the sun is going down, you just, you really have to, uh, budget your time properly and sometimes little excursions like this can not be a good use of time. Oh, that actually looks really pretty. With these clouds up above and the water flow coming in. Wow, look at that. That is really nice. Got the bird up there, bam. <laughs> Got the bird in my composition. In order to do a long exposure, which I want to try one, I'm going to put the ND64 back on. And there we go, about an eighth of a second should be good. Maybe a sixth of a second. There's this wave coming in, that looks really nice. You know, maybe, uh, you know, the further you are away from the water, the more of a long exposure you have to do to see the motion because you're further away from the motion happening. So in this case, it actually makes sense to do maybe a second long exposure instead of 0.5 or 0.6 of a second to get a little bit more of that water flow. Wow, look at that. I don't know if these uh, pictures are, are going to be ones that I use, but they're really pretty. I think I'm done with that. I think I am done with that. I am going to pop back down. Okay, so I saw some really interesting stuff in this. Man, the sky is beautiful. I feel a little overwhelmed, and this is honestly how I usually feel shooting seascapes. I'm always a little overwhelmed. But you know what? It's fun to be overwhelmed, I think. Because that means you're just seeing really cool stuff. So that's okay to be a little overwhelmed. Wow, look at the birds flying over. Some really nice pastel colors going on right now too. I find that most of my favorite seascapes end up being verticals. I'm not really sure why. I think it's because you get more of that foreground flow. All right, I think now we can finally take this ND off. There we go, beautiful. That looks really nice. Make sure we're in focus. Ah, look at this back here. See, 
this is what we were seeing from up on the rock. And I honestly never would have known this was here unless I went up on the rock. I'm not sure I like this, to be honest. I'm not quite sure. I almost feel like the wide angle is uh, not as good of an approach for this type of scene. Like this would be better maybe at 35 mil. about this little spot in here. I don't, haven't really found anything I'm super happy with in this spot. Back over to this sea stack over here. Hey, look at this little rock pool right here. Oh, it's just kind of some sand, a little bit of sand. All right, well, the sunset's almost done. Some nice colors in the sky right now still, kind of pastel-y. Got some pastel wispy reds up there. I might try and do one more shot of this sea stack here. It's funny, I felt like I walked down the beach and went and explored, and then I, I just came back to the same sea stack that I like a lot. I'm just getting low to see if we can get some kind of reflection here. There we go. You know what, that looks I don't know how it's gonna come out when I uh, get on the computer, but this is really pretty right now. Good thing I stood up. Well, you know what? I think that's gonna wrap it up for this vlog. As always, really hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to the channel because it's gonna be plenty more landscape photography vlogs in the future. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.